There's a whole world beneath us. There's all sorts of things going on beneath our feet that we don't know about. These are 20 incredible discoveries found underground that changed history. Number 20. New Eternal Sleeper Dinosaur Species Was Entombed While Still Alive A group of Belgian and Chinese paleontologists discovered a new species of dinosaur in China. Specialists have named the species Changmiania leoningensis, meaning eternal sleeper. The bones correspond to an ornithopod excavator dinosaur, which could reach 1.2 meters in length and is one of the most archaic discovered so far. The discovery was possible thanks to the fossils of two specimens that were trapped under the eruption of a volcano that covered them under the oldest layers of the so-called Lujiatin beds in the Yixian Formation in the province of Liaoning, northeast China. Paleontologist Pascal Godefroy of the aforementioned Belgian Institute explained that these animals were quickly covered by a fine sediment while they were still alive or just after their death. The fossils found date back to about 125 million years. They belong to the Cretaceous period and are contemporary with the Bernisart iguanodons. According to the researchers, these newly discovered dinosaurs were herbivorous, show no trace of plumage, and their skeleton reflects that they had powerful hind legs, a long stiff tail, and possibly dug burrows like rabbits. The Changmianya leongonensis's neck and forearms were very short but robust. Its shoulder blades are characteristic of burrowing vertebrates, and the upper part of its snout is shovel-shaped. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. This photo is an artist's recreation of something a mountaineer claims to have seen when exploring Mount Everest. If he saw what he claims to have seen, scientists believe the last living dinosaur could be hiding here. The mountaineer insists he saw some loitering in a cave on the mountain. Is that where dinosaurs are hiding? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag odd topic. Number 19. Piltdown Man Piltdown Man is known to be one of the biggest hoaxes in the history of paleoanthropology, mainly because it was believed to be true for more than 40 years from when its discovery was announced in 1912 until 1953, when the hoax was finally exposed. The story of this deception began and was based on skeletal remains, specifically a partial skull, a loose tooth, and a jaw with teeth allegedly discovered in England in 1908 in Piltdown, a town in Sussex. A worker found them in a quarry and handed them over to amateur archaeologists Charles Dawson, who presented them along with the eminent paleontologist Smith Woodward of the British Museum at the Geological Society of London. For years, the debate about the origin of these remains was maintained, and the press said that they most likely corresponded to the missing link, calling it Eoanthropus Dawsony. These remains were accepted by the scientific community without further analysis, mainly because it was perfect and identical to the idea of that time about the missing link, which was mainly a large brain with ape-like features that would later evolve into a human appearance, an idea contrary to what's now demonstrated with studies of true fossils. However, doubts began to arise about the age and origin of these remains. Finally, the dentist A.T. Marston determined that the jaw of this skeleton corresponded to an orangutan, the loose tooth to a monkey, and the skull to a hominid. Number 18. 6,200-year-old cat remains in Poland a group of archaeologists and researchers from the Nikolaus Copernicus University made an impressive find in the lands of southern Poland. They unearthed the remains of cats that have a recorded date of 6,200 years ago. The group of scientists were excavating the caves in southern Poland, but they did not expect to find feline remains dating as far back as 4,200 BCE. It is thought that there were agricultural settlements in the area in prehistoric times. Based on the data they obtained, they reached some conclusions that, for now, only remain as theories. They indicate that these cats were not wild, but they were not completely domesticated either. Their function alludes to a task that cats have carried out for millennia, the constant fight against rodents, specifically the pesky rats that tend to roam around farms and carry all kinds of diseases. The quadrupeds were probably allies of humans at this time, and thus their presence in the caves of southern Poland would be explained. The remains were buried in layers of sediment beside ceramic vessels. They first found the humerus of a feline, which turned out to be thousands of years older than what they had expected. This discovery places the alliance between cats and Neolithic farmers a lot further back than previously thought. Number 17. Richard III Discovery 
British researchers have confirmed that a skeleton with a cracked skull and twisted spine buried under a car park is that of Richard III, solving a 500-year-old mystery about the final resting place of the last English king to die in battle. Richard III, portrayed by William Shakespeare as a monstrous tyrant who murdered two princes in the Tower of London, died fighting his later successor, Henry Tudor, at the Battle of Bosworth Field in central England in 1485. This is one of the most important archaeological discoveries of recent times. After a scholarly presentation detailing the life, injuries, and physique of Richard III, the project's chief archaeologist, Richard Buckley, announced its completion to cheers and applause. The academic conclusion from the University of Leicester is that, beyond a reasonable doubt, the individual exhumed at Greyfriars in September 2012 is indeed Richard III, the last Plantagenet King of England. The academics claimed that the DNA extracted from the body matched that of Michael Ibsen, a Canadian-born London furniture maker who genealogists say was the direct descendant of Richard's sister, Anne of York. The skeleton showed signs of injuries consistent with injuries received in battle. A sharp implement appeared to have severed part of the back of the skull, while a metal arrow was found between the vertebrae in the upper spine. Number 16. Victoria K. The Dales Cavern, near Settle in Yorkshire, UK, is home to skeletons of mammoths and ancient Roman remains. This place has been described as an archaeologist's dream. Victoria Cave is made of limestone, and it was discovered by accident in 1837, the year Queen Victoria was crowned, hence its name. Now, it's been completely excavated, and the discoveries made there have been crucial to understand climate change over thousands of years. This place is so rich on historical value that even Charles Darwin himself took an interest in Victoria Cave. Inside the limestone cave, they found ancient bone remains of mammoths, hippos, a rhino, elephants, and spotted hyenas who all lived in England over 130,000 years ago. Back then, the climate in northern Europe was warm enough to support species that today can only survive in Africa. Although scientists nowadays are quite sure about the cyclical weather theory, this cave offers further proof of this being a fact. They also found evidence that a brown bear hibernated in this cave right after the last ice age. Then, the discovery of items such as brooches, coins, and pottery offered unequivocal evidence that the cave was also inhabited by the ancient Romans. So much history in just one small place is pretty amazing, don't you think? Number 15. King Tut's Dagger Here's the million dollar question. How could this dagger be forged in Egypt if it's made of extraterrestrial materials? One may wonder. The answer, as unbelievable as it may seem, does not involve aliens after all. No, the iron used to make the knife found in the tomb of Tutankhamun came from a meteorite. But the mystery remains, as the manufacturing methods that were used do not agree with those that were common in ancient Egypt more than 3,000 years ago, as discovered by a team from the Chiba Institute of Technology who traveled in 2020 to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo for a thorough chemical analysis. What they have found, as they explain in a study published in the Journal of Meteoritics and Planetary Science, is that the exceptionally preserved dagger was forged at a low temperature of less than 950 degrees. Additionally, its gold hilt features a small percentage of non-sulfur calcium, suggesting that lime plaster rather than plaster was used as the adhesive for the decorations. Lime plaster in Egypt began to be used during the Ptolemaic period, 305 to 30 BC. So it's evident that the gold hilt hints at the foreign origin of the dagger, possibly from Mitanni, Anatolia. Tusrata, king of Mitanni, gave an iron dagger with a gold handle to Amenhotep III, the grandfather of Tutankhamun. And this could be that dagger. Number 14. Heinrich Schliemann, the man who discovered Troy. At the age of seven, Heinrich Schliemann, a poor boy from Germany, son of a drunk evangelical pastor, received a prodigious Christmas present. A book signed by a certain Georg Ludwig Gerer called The World History for Children. Among other fabulous stories, Heinrich cast his eyes on the lines that narrated the Trojan War and about a drawing that showed Aeneas with his father Anchises and his son Ascanio leaving the mythical city of Homer, which was being consumed by fire. From then on, Heinrich Schliemann was the poor boy who only dreamed 
dreamed of finding Troy. At the age of 14, Heinrich already worked in a warehouse from 5 in the morning until 11 at night. One day, Schliemann, who could no longer bear weight because he injured his back carrying a barrel in Holtz's shop, left for Hamburg and sailed for Venezuela. He had to earn money to be able to leave all that life of hardship behind and dedicate himself to looking for Troy. The ship was shipwrecked. Young Heinrich survived and ended up in Amsterdam. He started begging in the street until a charitable soul gave him a job, stamping bills of exchange. In 1876, he was able to begin his work in Mycenae, the mythical city of King Agamemnon, leader of the Greeks in the Trojan War. A city from the Bronze Age surrounded by Cyclopean walls and with two burial sites. In one of them, a gold mask appeared. The mask was dated between 1550 BC and 1500 BC. The Trojan War was placed by the ancient Greeks between the 13th and 12th centuries BC. Heinrich Schliemann fulfilled his dream. Number 13. Mask of Agamemnon I have gazed upon the face of Agamemnon is the sentence that Heinrich Schliemann, completely moved with emotion, sent in a telegram to the Greek king when he unearthed this magnificent mask. Do the Homeric poems have a historical basis? Are they just a legend or a scientific document to know the Aegean Bronze Age? Until the 19th century, defending the existence of a civilization prior to the archaic Greek in the Aegean region was thorny. Although ancient writers had narrated in great detail remote stories of heroes and gods, very few scholars gave them credence. They considered them more indebted to fantasy and legend than to history. The arrival of an amateur archaeologist, Heinrich Schliemann, would partly change that perception. Hand in hand with the Iliad and the Odyssey, it would open the ban on the rediscovery of two civilizations. The Minoan, settled in Crete in the middle of the Bronze Age, and the Mycenaean, a civilization developed at the end of that same era in the heart of the Peloponnese, characterized by large palaces and fortresses. The main centers of the latter were Tyrants, Pylos, Thebes, and Mycenae. Schliemann identified Mycenae with the legendary kingdom of the Atrids, a lineage to which mythical heroes such as King Atreus and his sons Agamemnon and Menelaus, the main personalities responsible for the invasion of Troy, belonged. Number 12. Gobekli Tepe Gobekli Tepe, the first sanctuary of humanity, is located in the southeastern part of Turkey. The translation of its toponym is Ponchi Hill or Belly Button Hill. The site is known to be the first sanctuary of humanity. Close to Turkey's border with Syria, we find the city of Şanlıurfa in the southeastern region of Anatolia. About 15 kilometers away, we can find this wonderful archaeological site. It was in 1995 when archaeologist Klaus Schmidt from the German Archaeological Institute, together with researchers from the Shanlorfa Museum began excavations there. When Schmidt and his team arrived at Gobekli Tepe, the first thing that struck him was that it was a completely artificial summit. In fact, that's where its name Belly Hill or Belly Button Hill comes from. This place had been built without a doubt by people. It was a place of worship for the dead, although curiously, no burial has been found to date. The ornaments on some of the limestone blocks are figures of animals. For example, you can see lions, wild boars, foxes, snakes, insects, spiders, spiders and birds such as vultures and waterfowl. We do not find anywhere in the world a site like Gobekli Tepe. There is no similar construction with such an ancient chronology. To give you an idea, it was built 7,000 years before the Pyramids of Cheops and 6,000 years before the Stonehenge complex. Number 11. The underground Nazi city of tunnels and bunkers built by Dutch slaves for 3,300 SS soldiers. This is one of the largest infrastructures of the last century that the German regime built in record time in Europe during World War II. Adolf Hitler's idea was to prevent a possible Allied invasion from Britain, and so he had more than 10,000 cordoned off defensive structures erected from southern France to northern Norway. Bunkers, trenches, and firing points sheltered hundreds of thousands of German soldiers in this defensive chain with which the German army tried to stop an attack from the sea, a plan that failed on June 6, 1944 with the Allied victory after the landing of Normandy. Today, the subterranean city, barely visible between bushes of more than 5,000 kilometers, begins to come back to life. In some fringes, especially in the Netherlands, they've been turning it into museums and small hostels where the visitor can experience the monstrous and gigantic aspects of war. German soldiers lived there waiting for the Allied offensive, and during the war, the underground bunker served as baths, canteens, and even theaters. Number 10. 
stunning statue discovered in Egyptian mud pit may depict Ramses II. A group of German and Egyptian archaeologists have discovered a colossal statue 8 meters high in a neighborhood of Cairo in Egypt. This statue may represent Ramses II, one of the best-known ancient pharaohs who reigned the longest in the country. Much of the head of the colossus was removed from the mud and groundwater. They had to use a bulldozer to lift it. That's how big the statue is. Of course, they took some precautions and the parts were recovered without any damage, according to Khaled Mohammed Abu Alala, manager of antiquities at Ain Sham. University. The Egyptian Minister of Antiquities, Khaled Al Anani, detailed to local media that they had found the bust of the statue, the lower part of the head, the crown, the right ear, and a fragment of the right eye. Egyptologist Khaled Nabil Osman said the statue was an impressive find and that the area of the working class neighborhood of Mataria in eastern Cairo is likely littered with other buried antiquities. Ramses II was the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty in Egypt, who ruled for some 66 years from 1279 until 1213 BCE. He is one of the most famous pharaohs due to the large number of vestiges that remain of his active reign. Number 9. An underground city of giants discovered in the Grand Canyon. Did you know that the Grand Canyon was the birthplace of an ancient culture in which people of Cyclopean proportions existed? Well, according to an article published in the Gazeta de Arizona on April 5, 1909, this is a true fact. This mysterious and extinct civilization only left us some structures as a testimony of their existence, but for some, that is largely enough proof that they did, in fact, exist. The article in the Gazeta mentions the discovery of a massive subterranean citadel found by G. E. Kincaid, an explorer of the time and a recognized archaeologist who had the financial support of the Smithsonian Institution. He found it by chance while he was rafting on the Colorado River. According to his descriptions, the grandiose entrance to this mysterious citadel was at the end of a tunnel that extended some 1,600 meters underground. Kincaid was clearly impressed with the civilization that managed to build such a city, claiming that they must have possessed very advanced engineering skills to do so. The structure of the tunnels, per se, is also very impressive. The central axis of the underground city made it a gigantic camera from which radiated passages, like the radii of a wheel. In the walls of the main chamber, there were hundreds of copper weapons and tablets covered with symbols. And then there were the mysterious mummified bodies, none shorter than 2.74 meters, suggesting this civilization suffered from gigantism. Number 8. Disturbing Underground Bunker Discovered Although the Second World War happened relatively not that long ago, we still keep finding unexpected things about that time, even today. In this case, a Nazi bunker was discovered in the Polish city of Lublin, strewn with bullets. This amazing discovery was made by construction workers that were working on a new garage. After close examination, experts have concluded that this bunker may have been the site of a gruesome and intense battle between the German Nazis and the Soviet Red Army back in 1944. The bunker was buried underground, and it was made out of wood. The 80-year-old structure contains a staircase with three underground corridors, concrete walls, and ceilings encased by wooden beams. In addition to the bunker, a group of archaeologists also found several mineral water bottles from both Germany and the Czech Republic, as well as ammunition remnants from both armies. This was most likely the site of a very bloody battle during the German occupation of Poland. It's too soon to tell, but the bomb squad has been deployed in case there are still unexploded bombs down there. Number 7. Ancient Pyramids Discovered Underground in Italy the city of Orvieto in the central Italian region of Umbria sits on top of a cliff made of volcanic ash and soft stone. The lure of its excellent natural defenses has kept the site constantly populated since Etruscan times, and its vast panoply of tunnels and subterranean chambers, first excavated by the Etruscans, have been used by the inhabitants ever since. A census of the underground labyrinths has determined that there are at least 1,200 caves, tunnels, and cavities of different shapes and sizes, and it's certain there are many more than those documented. During an archaeological survey, a group of alumni and archaeologists have found that at least two of these caves were carved by the Etruscans in the shape of a pyramid. The Etruscans made hundreds of excavations in central Italy, but not one with this pyramidal shape had ever been found. They found passages of Etruscan constructions, which encouraged them to continue digging downward to see where they arrived. More with the intrigue that aroused them in moving forward and seeing that the walls were increasingly wider as they descended. Before long, they reached 
reached a medieval floor from the 13th century, and just below it, they found a fill layer composed of fragments of Etruscan and Greek pottery from the 5th and 6th centuries. Number 6. Saudi Arabia Discovered an Underground River a Boston University geologist announced the amazing discovery of an ancient river channel that crosses Saudi Arabia. This is a crucial find since the underground channel could potentially provide water for agricultural development in the desert region. The riverbed, which is about 510 miles, is located between the Hejaz Mountains and Kuwait. It follows a fault line capable of holding water in the porous rock found deep below the Earth's surface and has been there for thousands of years. The dried out channel occasionally carries runoff water from rainstorms occurring in the mountains. But that's not all. The channel may also contain ancient deposits of water that are often replenished by current rain. This means that the desert contains much more water than previously thought, which is very good news for the region. The ancient river's delta covered what is nowadays Kuwait and could possibly explain the fact that two-thirds of the country is covered with deposits of granite and volcanic rock. The river dried up more than 5,000 years ago, and now they may find prehistoric villages buried by the sand along its bank. The river still has no name, but geologists have suggested the name Kuwait River due to its importance to the country. Number 5. Mysterious Underground Tomb Discovered in Egypt a group of archaeologists has discovered 27 wooden coffins in the ancient necropolis of Saqqara in Egypt, where one of the oldest pyramids in the world is also found, according to the country's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. The wooden sarcophagi are ornate and covered in hieroglyphics. They were found stacked in two burial pits, the ministry said in a statement. They have not yet been opened, he added. Saqqara has been declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. This pyramid was built around 2700 BC by the architect Imhotep, and it is considered to be one of the oldest in the whole world. Images of the well-preserved sarcophagi show brown and blue motifs, as well as numerous hieroglyphic inscriptions. For years, the Egyptian authorities have announced quite frequently archaeological discoveries, with the aim, among others, of reviving tourism in the country. This very important sector for the country's income has been greatly affected by political instability and attacks following the 2011 revolution that ousted Hosni Mubarak from power, and more recently by the COVID-19 pandemic. Number 4. The Betts Mystery Sphere the mysterious Betts Sphere is a small metal sphere with a diameter of 20 centimeters, weighing approximately 10 kilograms, and it is the subject of many conspiracy theories. The Betts family investigated a small fire near their home in Fort George Island, Florida. They lived in a mansion on the island's highest point called Neff's House, a 1920s Tudor-style castle. The family of three, Antoine, Jerry, and son Terry, found a small metal sphere the size of a bowling ball. They decided to take it back home. Betts contacted the U.S. Navy for answers. However, the officers were initially uninterested and said that the ball was not U.S. property. Several days later, Terry was playing guitar at his house. The sphere seemed to react to the sound of the guitar, making a throbbing noise that startled their dog. Later, it was noticed that the sphere rolled on its own and even stopped on its own and changed direction. The couple's son began experimenting with the sphere. They noticed that the sphere made noise when hit by a hammer. They also found that the sphere moved after being shaken and placed on the ground. The sphere was moving on its own, following people around the house. For the family, the activity was greater on sunny days and went in directions opposite to the applied force, neglecting gravity. Also, the sphere emitted a low-frequency sound as if there was an internal motor. At this point, the family turned to the media to find out what this unknown object was. The Betts family ended up keeping the sphere in a box, just taking it out to show friends and family, and thus preventing the ball from rolling on its own. Number 3. Boats Under San Francisco in San Francisco, every day, thousands of passengers on underground streetcars pass through the hull of a 19th century ship, and they don't even know about it. But that's not all. Likewise, thousands of pedestrians walk on the city streets, completely oblivious to the fact that there are dozens of very old ships right underneath their feet, buried beneath the financial district. But where do they come from, and how come they're buried there now? Well, these old vessels brought hundreds of eager prospectors to San Fran during the California Gold Rush, only to be 
sadly abandoned and later covered up by landfills as the city grew amazingly fast in the late 1800s. The ships were mostly forgotten until 1963 when the San Francisco Maritime National Park created a map of the buried vessels. But not all of the ships from back then saw an untimely burial. Some of them were put to other uses, the most famous of them being the Niantic, which was intentionally run aground in 1849 to be used as a warehouse, a saloon, and a hotel before it unfortunately burned down in a massive fire in 1851, which also claimed many other ships in the cove. Number 2. The Baghdad Batteries in 1936, during excavations on a hill in Kujut Rabu, a village southeast of Baghdad, Iraq, workers from the Iraqi State Railway Department discovered an old grave covered with a stone slab. They also found some very unique clay containers, vase-shaped and light yellow in color. Inside was a copper cylinder fixed with asphalt to the mouth of the neck. Inside the cylinder, there was an iron rod. The container was 14 centimeters high by 4 centimeters in diameter, while the copper cylinder was 9 centimeters high by 2.5 0.6 centimeters in diameter. The iron rod protruded one centimeter and gave the impression of having been coated with a thin layer of lead. In 1938, the German archaeologist Wilhelm Koenig, then in charge of the Baghdad State Museum Laboratory, identified it as a probable electric battery. The first analysis of this object consisted of introducing an electrolyte inside it and connecting a lamp to it, which lit up very weakly. The official report that was later written said that this object behaved exactly like a modern electric battery. Back at the Berlin Museum, Koenig related the discovery to other cylinders, rods, and similar asphalt plugs from Mesopotamia, all of them with thin iron and bronze rods. It seemed to him that these batteries could have been connected in series, one after another, to increase the voltage produced. Number 1. Terracotta Warriors from the Mausoleum of the First Qin Emperor of China Emperor Qin Shi Huang's funerary monument was discovered in 1974 in Xi'an on the ancient Silk Road. The statues of the warriors are located one and a half kilometers from the mausoleum. It is a huge army buried next to it in 210 BC to protect him in the afterlife. The statues of the terracotta warriors and horses were discovered by chance, and it's currently considered one of the most important archaeological finds of the 20th century. That is why they've become an essential visit for tourists who come to the ancient city of Xi'an. In 1987, UNESCO declared them a World Heritage Site within the complex of the Mausoleum of Emperor Qin Shi Huang. The terracotta warriors were placed in battle formation. In total, there are four pits that have been dug to a depth of 7 meters. Most of the statues were found in Pit 1, more than 6,000 life-sized terracotta replicas of an ancient Chinese army. Each one has their own physical features, in addition to their uniforms being differentiated according to military ranks. In Pit 2 were the cavalry units, composed mainly of a few commanding officers, war chariots, and horses. Pit 3 was reserved for the army leadership. The statues of the highest ranking officers were found here. Pit 4 was found empty. As you can see, our past can still keep amazing and grand secrets from us. All we need to do is find them and unearth them. What about you? Which one of these amazing discoveries is your absolute favorite? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.